Understanding Non-Small Cell Lung Cancer. When you inhale, the lungs transfer oxygen from the air to your blood. They also take carbon dioxide from your blood and get rid of it when you exhale. Lung cancer is a disease caused by the unchecked growth and spread of some cells from the lungs. Non-small cell lung cancer is one of two major types of lung cancer. The other one is a small cell lung cancer. The most common subtypes of non-small cell lung cancer are adenocarcinoma, squamous cell epidermoid carcinoma, and large cell undifferentiated carcinoma. Non-small cell lung cancer is the most common type of lung cancer and affects about 8 of every 10 people with lung cancer. There is no single cause of non-small cell lung cancer. Like most other adult cancers, non-small cell lung cancer is caused by a buildup of damage to cells. Over many years, this damage changes some cells so that they can grow, multiply, and spread unchecked. If a cancer isn't completely killed or removed, it can spread to other organs. A cancer that is spread to another site is called a metastasis. There are two types of risk factors for non-small cell lung cancer. Risk factors that you can change and risk factors that you can't change. Risk factors that you can change are smoking, being exposed to secondhand smoke, radon like in a basement, asbestos, by working in mines, mills, textile plants, or with old insulation, uranium and other radioactive materials, chemicals like arsenic, coal products, and diesel fumes, and arsenic in drinking water. Risk factors that you can't change are air pollution, having had lung cancer, prior radiation therapy to the lungs, and parents or siblings with lung cancer, especially if young when diagnosed. The symptoms of non-small cell lung cancer are not specific. Possible symptoms are a cough that doesn't go away or gets worse, coughing up blood, rust-colored spit, hoarse voice, unexpected weight loss and loss of appetite, shortness of breath, feeling tired or weak, a lung infection such as bronchitis or pneumonia that won't go away, and wheezing with no known cause like asthma. Symptoms that non-small cell lung cancer has spread to other organs are pain in the back or hips if it's in those bones, headaches, weak or numb arm or leg, dizziness, balance problems, and seizures if it's in the brain or spinal cord. So far, researchers haven't found any drugs, vitamins, herbal remedies, or alternative medicines that can help prevent lung cancer. The most important thing you can do to lower the risk of non-small cell lung cancer is don't smoke cigarettes, cigars, pipes. Other things you can do. Avoid secondhand smoke. Avoid radon and other chemicals that can cause cancer. Eat a healthy diet. Having a small cancer that hasn't spread outside the lung increases survival. The five basic ways to treat people with non-small cell lung cancer are surgery, radiation therapy, chemotherapy, targeted therapy, and immunotherapy. Which options are best for you will depend on factors like your tumor type, size, location, and spread, tumor molecular Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning to the program Platform for Education. This is the program Platform for Education. We are here this morning again. 
Uh, we have been, today is the 25th day of November. Okay. And um, your host, your host is, your host is Demons Kukula Pay. We have been discussing for this week, uh, we started last week, we have been discussing venereal diseases. We talk about the bacteria, we talk about virus, and today we are talking about parasites. We are talking about parasites. How <clears throat> parasite is divided into two sections, just as bacteria is divided into two sections. Bacteria, we got gram negative bacteria. We got gram-positive bacteria, and those are bacteria that we know their character, what they do. In that way, when you come to the hospital and something go wrong with you and we discover the sign and symptom, it will put us into a particular area to determine whether this is gram-negative bacterial infection or this is gram-positive bacterial infection, then it leads all with giving you the right type of medication. Okay? So, so that's what we're going to do. That's what we've been doing. So today we're talking about um, Parasite. This is Platform for Education. We are broadcasting live from the state of Pennsylvania, United States of America. Please share the video with other people so that we can know uh, that uh, you are around and you are getting the message. All right. Um, this network is Liberian Radio and Television Network. Okay. It's for everyone, everybody in Philadelphia or beyond. You want us to do anything for you? We can carry you live on birthday party, wedding party, any little group that you want us to put you on, we can do that. All you need to do is to call us. We will take care of that. Okay? All right. We will start with uh, Parasite in a few minutes. For right now, let's take a little break, and we'll be right back with you. Wake up. 
These are five facts about breast cancer in under a minute. Every 13 minutes, a woman in the USA dies of breast cancer. One in 12 women will be diagnosed with breast cancer in their lifetime. Breast cancer also affects men and kills 450 men in the USA every year. Exercise such as walking and a little light jog will reduce breast cancer by 30%. Breast cancer is one of the most survivable types of cancer. Good morning, good morning, we are back. We are back. Good morning, we are back. Um, like I say, welcome to the program platform for education. This morning, we are discussing our segment, uh, Venereal diseases, okay? Venereal diseases. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You are? Yeah. Oh, yeah, but I see you, you play commercial or what? No, 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 I was playing commercial, yeah. But if I go now, right? Yeah. So, um, our segment we've been discussing this week is venereal diseases. Today, we are on parasite. All right. So, our your host is Demon Space, and our platform, the name of it is Platform for Education. You see over there. Okay. Later on, I will put my uh, phone number. If you have any problem or any question, you may give me a call, okay? All right, so <clears throat> let's go right into the program platform for education. We say that when people get sick, it got to be that signal got to be due to or it got to be caused. That signal will be due to something. It will either be due to bacterial infection. It will either be due to parasite infection. It will either be due to virus infection. It will either be due, due to a uh, 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 parasite infection or uh, growth, one of those. So we started with the bacteria, we went to virus, and now we are to 
Parasite today. All right. We got Parasite divided into two categories. Just like we have bacteria divided into two categories. All right. Okay. The bacteria are uh, divided into two categories. The, the, the two categories we had was what? Ground positive and ground negative. Now we're discussing parasite divided into two categories. Is the two categories are um, a topic ectop. Ector, we call that ector E C T or E T C or E T O <laughs> E T O parasite. Ector parasite. That means that's a parasite that live on your skin. It live on your skin. They are there on they only survive. Parasite only survive on your blood. It live on your skin. That's what we call egg parasite. Ectoparasite. Ectoparasite live on your skin. Endo. Endoparasite. E-N-D-O. Endoparasite. Live inside your skin. Okay? So we're discussing those two. So we started with uh, a parasite that live in the skin. We said endo. Endoparasite. Endoparasite live in the skin. Live in the inner in the body. Mainly inside the intestine. Alright? One of those we call round worms. Round worm will get it, you know, in a, a you, the egg is in a warm area. You can't it is very hard to see it in a cold area like where we are right now. More people from the um, refugee camp will have come here with round worms. Okay, they would may I come here with round one and again, a, 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 you will try round one from you know water, you don't wash your hand. We come down to the same thing if you are not in not in a unsanitary area, you don't wash your hand and you shake somebody's hand coming from in the toilet and you got the green, put it to green, you buy it, and somebody. Selling this potato green, and the, they got uh, that round one. The air is on, is is passing through, through the uh, 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 is passing through the the the, the feces. The person clean himself and they now wash himself, and he hold the potato green, okay. Leave that green and then bring it right to the market. You went to buy the potato green and you think it's clean. You just wash it and you start doing something. It's not the right thing. You can get round one from there. And when you got round one, the next thing that it does, the next thing that it does is that it calls uh, around your neighbor. You see that around your neighbor? When you start having pain around your neighbor, you have to start having pain around your neighbor, you can have round one. You can have round one when you start having pain. It's not right. That's how round one can cause uh, 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 illness, belly pain. You know, round one can cause belly pain. But again, we are in the developed world. We are in the developed nation. Those are not things that happen to people here more often. So you don't see doctor here concentrating on that. The only people you see concentrating on that when you say, oh, I'm having pain around my neighbor, you know what the doctor here will be thinking about? They will be thinking about appendicitis because appendicitis you have pain around your neighbor and then go the pain come from the right side of your of your of your abdomen and then travel you see where we call my bunny point and all that kind of thing that all they will be thinking about they might not be even thinking about uh you know belly pain like that they will not be thinking about round worm okay but that will happen and it is more prevalent in africa the next one is uh, whole worm, and y'all know whole worm, right? That whole worm, it get into your, it get into your stomach, it get into your intestine. The hair stick right into the intestine, and it will keep sucking. 
sucking blood. It just keeps sucking blood. This is the type of it. How do we know? Maybe you may have one or two whole ones. And it will keep sucking blood. And you are not eating enough food that will make more blood cell. So as a result, the little blood you got, the whole worm is there, it just sucking it, sucking it, sucking it, sucking it. As, as a result, you are anemic. You see, this is how whole worm cause disease. The whole worm suck your blood so much and then until you become anemic, under your blood, you got low blood, the heart having hard time pumping this small amount of blood to all part of the body at the same time most of most part of the body may not even be getting the blood properly if they don't get it if you have your artery is clogged and your artery is narrow going to your heart that amount of blood that's supposed to go there is not going there you will start having chest pain okay now you see if the amount of blood that's supposed to go to your brain you are not having it what you going to be having ischemia Okay, at the same time, the heart is pumping that little amount of blood, pumping it very hard. The heart will keep doing it until the muscle get big. It fail. You come up with heart failure. You see that? Just from whole warrant infection. You have developed heart failure. You have developed ischemia. You have developed a uh, 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 heart attack. Whole warrant is not a good worm. Okay? When you are mainly when somebody is anemic, especially from that side, from Africa, even here, and the person just anemic all the time, let us check for whole worm. Again, we are in the developed world. The laboratory to check for whole worm to see to determine the whole worm, you don't just find that it's not just easy to find a tropical laboratory technician who can identify these whole worms. You got to find that in the laboratory. You got to diagnose this case from the laboratory standpoint. Okay? The next thing we'll be talking about is pinworm. Pinworm, you know that the child has pinworm. When the child has pinworm, you know what you what how you will how you will know. That child will be scratching the butt. He will be scratching the butt. He will tell you, oh my butt itching, and we call that inner itching. Okay, the inner will be itching. The butt will be itching, okay? It will, you keep scratching the butt until he can scrape it and it becomes so. When it becomes so, he develops an infection, you know the butt is not a sterile place. So when he starts scratching the butt, when the child starts scratching the butt, be, be careful. Know that some kind of, he had developed some kind of worm infection, okay? And that's pain worm, okay? <laughs> then, that's how we will we will we will diagnose that kind of worm. So we talk about round worm that will cause pain around your neighbor. We talk about a uh, whole worm that will be sucking your blood in the intestine, in the stomach, and you can it can cause low blood, low blood in the person, and that low blood can it can lead to heart failure. It can lead to ischemia. It can lead to many different things. Okay, it's not the right thing to do. All right, we'll come back and get you more again. Let's take a little break and we'll come right back. I wake up, wake up, wake up, 
back this is the platform for education we are on radio Liberian radio television network we're discussing parasite hemoparasite that's what we are discussing tonight hemoparasite let me put that there all right hemoparasite is what we're discussing today all right we discussed that the the parasite, the worm that can cause pain around your neighbor is Ascaris, round worms. The uh, worm that cause you to be anemic, to, to have low blood, is whole worm. The worm that cause you to have the anus, the butt itching, is pain worm. Now, there's another worm that cause we call trachinosis. This is the pain, this is the worm that they can cause to have you can have fever and around your eye will be swollen. Alright? Around your eye will be swollen. So around your eye will be swollen. Yeah, I'll call you right back. Okay. There's the uh, uh, worm that causes you to be, you know, to, 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 to have, you know, swelling around your eye and you have fever, you know, and you got a pink eye and all that. So, in, the, in this country, when you have those kind of things going on, Sometimes you go to the hospital, they oh, maybe you got a bacterial infection, the poor eye drop in your eye, and in the, oh, you're having fever, they gave you Tylenol, but you got worms. Again, we need a tropical doctor. That's why we like to always choose a tropical doctor, both the one that know the Western medicine, and when we say the Western medicine, we're talking about diseases that are in this area, that are in the cold area. Then the diseases that are in 
the the uh, the uh, tropical area in Africa. If you find a doctor like that, most of your problem will be solved because when you come from Africa, they don't check your stool for roundworm infection. Okay, they don't check your stool for roundworm infection. So let me put the round one on. Let me put those round one on so that you just know what we're talking about. Okay? Let me put it on so that you know what we're talking about. You might not see me, but you might see the round one. Okay? Okay, you see the round one? That's the round one. Where we see A, where you see that A, that round one eggs. That's the egg. You see that? That's the air. That's the air that is passed through the feces. Now, when you don't wash your hand, that egg, you ingest that egg, it hatch in your body. That's what we're talking about. Okay? So, when you, you get those kind of things, it's not the right thing to do. Okay? So, let me put, let me, let me show you another picture that you will, See when the wrong worm, when the worm get inside your body, how it behave. Okay, let let me show you the other one. Okay, now look at look at how that is. You see you see that you see the worm over there. Okay, we got whip worm. Whip worm over there is that's the that's the worm that when you have you you go to the toilet with blood, you go to the toilet with blood with mucus and other things like that. You see, it that whip worm, you know what it cause? It cause uh right up prolap or you will call it hemorrhoid. That's the kind of worm can cause hemorrhoid. You see, Jadia Lambia. You see the tape worm over there in the in the second. In the second uh, 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 circle, that that one in the second in the second circle, that's the one. You see, we got two, four, six circle down there. So let me move those names so that you will see what we're talking about. Okay, let me move those names so that you will see. Okay, you see that? Let me move this one. Okay. Let me move that. All right. Let me move the topic. So I want you to see. All right. Now you see we got six six circles. The first two, we got the first one from the left to right. We got the whip worm. That when you when you have that whip worm, you go to the toilet with blood and mucus. Okay, and that kind of worm will cause you to have hemorrhoid. The tape worm is the one that in the second circle. When you have that kind of worm, you know what you will have anemia. Okay, then the second, the second, uh, the, the, the second group, the second group, that's the round worm over there. That's the round worm that cause you, that can have you the cause your belly pain. You see, then the next one will call giardiasis. Sometimes you, you go to the toilet, there's a fat, there's an oil. They're like, when you toilet, the, 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 the toilet is slippery, but you got fat over there. You got fat on the water. Like when you toilet in the camo, you look at your, you look, look in the camo, you'll be, you look at it like there's a, you put oil in the, in the water, you put oil in that camo. It will be sitting on top of the water when you have jaria infection. That's how the toilet looks. All right. Then you have the whole worm. The one you see, the first one, that was a tape worm. Then the other one will say whole worm. You see, whole worm and tape worm, they are two different things. You see, the whole worm, you can get that from feces and other things also. The tape worm is the one that when you eat on coke is, or on a coke, pork meat or meat, you can get tape worm from there. You see, so you got to be careful when you eat roast beef and other things like that. You see, the coca, the, the, we, we call cocidia. Cocidia worm is the one that you see over here. They are all transmitted through, um, through, 
on sanitary area. That's how it is. You see the intestine over there. That's how when they when the when the, when the, when the worm is packed in this intestine, it's packed in there. You see, sometimes it become you be, you come with obstruction. You are constipated. You see, that's how the effect. That how the cause human infection. That's the kind of infection that it cause. So we just want you to see that. All right, we want you to see that. So that's what it cause. I want you to know that this morning. All right. So those are the things we talk about.